Toyota hasn't made a Toyota sports car in years. The new Toyota Supra has German blood. The Toyota GR86 has always had Subaru bones. But finally, after nearly two decades, Toyota has developed a purebred, ground-up Toyota sports car that's actually coming to the United States, the GR Corolla. But those who built the legendary cars that made the Toyota name famous are long gone. And the question remains, does Toyota still know how to make a sports car? To answer that, let's drive the GR Corolla and take a look back at the cars that paved the way for Toyota to once again make a sports car that proudly wears its own badge. I'm Guff, this is Albon, let's get started. It certainly looks the part, doesn't it? Wide flares, muscular proportions, forged carbon fiber, your mother's grocery getter hatchback transformed into a superhero. And while the enticing looks of the GR Corolla have certainly taken the internet by storm, so too has what lies beneath. 300 horsepower from a 1.6 liter three-cylinder engine, one that has been forged in the fires of motorsport. A six-speed manual sending power to all four wheels, thanks to its electronically controlled all-wheel drive system, one that was developed for the tumultuous stages of world rally. And not just to race, to win. It's a classic formula. Take a simple, well-engineered, if not boring, road car, inject some motorsports into it, and end up with a fantastic, rewarding sports car that can be thrashed all day and never complain. It's a formula that Toyota has concocted time and time again. A formula they started perfecting nearly 60 years ago, with cars like the Crown, Corona, and Publica racing in the Japanese Grand Prix. That racing pedigree later would lead to the creation of road cars like the Corolla Sprinter, a tiny coupe with 70 horsepower and a four-speed manual exactly what they needed to spank the Datsun 1000 on road and track. And although supercars like the 2000 GT sat at the helm of Toyota's lineup, it was the cheap and cheerful sporty cars like the Corolla Sprinter that people actually had in their driveways. A few years later, Toyota was rallying the Celica, and the Celica 1600 GT's off-road wins were the reason we got to drive the 1972 Celica GTV on-road. And of course, we can't forget the legendary AE86 Corolla, the Hachiroku, a car that technically shouldn't have even existed existed with the inevitable flow of progress pushing the world to front wheel drive. But the engineers that made the car loved to race, and they knew they needed rear wheel drive. Not just to win championships, but because they knew their customers loved the balance of the FR Corolla. And so efficiency and cost reduction was thrown out the window for the AE86 in favor for front engined rear wheel drive goodness. And it wasn't just any engine either, it was the Yamaha developed 4A GE. Four valves per cylinder, 7800 RPM, all in a lightweight economy box body with perfect weight distribution and a limited slip diff. And when those engineers took that little Corolla racing and won the 1985 Japan Touring Car Championship, we the people celebrated by taking our Hachirokus to the mountain pass. Of course, eventually the world moved on and when the Celica was forced to go front wheel drive, it was the Toyota engineers rally aspirations that led to the creation of the ST165 Celica GT4, a car that won the 84, 85, and 87 WRC Safari and gave us the two liter 3S GTE powered road car that gave us the vicarious feeling of being Yuha Kankunen. And Toyota followed it up with the ST185, then the ST205. Back then, Toyota understood that motorsports was magic. Something that could be sprinkled onto even the most basic of road cars to make automotive experiences that people could never forget. And yet, not long after, it seemed that even Toyota themselves forgot. The last sports car we got with a Toyota VIN stamped on it was the MRS, which ended production in 2007. And while we did get a fantastic sports car just five years later with the 86 BRZ Twins, it wasn't Toyota enough for everyone. Many owners of the original AE86, a car that truly embodied the soul of a Toyota sports car, just couldn't get on board. And while people like myself would tell them they were being too closed-minded, nobody could really deny that with Subaru spinning the spanners, the twins often left a little to be desired. Seven years later, Toyota brought back their most cherished nameplate, the Supra. And if those same people thought the Subaru partnership was too far, then, well. And while so many of us have found joy in driving Toyota's latest offerings despite their origins, if you've driven those hallowed Toyotas over the years, it's undeniable that they do have their own special sauce. A feeling of being in a car that, despite looking so ordinary, could feel so extraordinary. A feeling that no matter how much the car rattled underneath you, somehow it always felt well put together. A feeling of trust in the intelligent engineering and precision, often under the leadership of some of the most passionate automotive personalities to come out of Japan. It's a certain feeling that Toyota themselves have been unable to grasp in recent years. Well, 
until the GR Yaris came around. A car that proved to the world that they could do all those things that they used to do. Race on the world stage with technology they built in-house and not only become champions themselves, but also let us, the enthusiasts, revel in some of their glory. With a road car that had tactility, performance, rowdiness, all wrapped up in a cute economy car package made under the supervision of true automotive enthusiasts. That is, as long as you lived in a country where they actually sold it. You see, the GR Yaris never made it stateside. But now, just a few short years later, the GR Corolla sure has. On first impressions, the GR Corolla in core and circuit trim is, in many ways, a Corolla. The seating position in the GR branded bucket seats is a little high, a little pedestrian. And other than the very information dense digital cluster and the GR steering wheel, the interior is par for the course for an NPC mobile like the Corolla. But then again, that's half the fun with a car like this. Lure your unsuspecting passengers into a false sense of security, then drop a gear or two and let the turbo do the talk. The GR Corolla's tiny 1.6 liter three cylinder engine might seem unassuming on paper, but under load it growls and whistles. It makes blow off valve sounds that give you flashbacks to the days of HKS Super Sequential. 10 and a half to one compression and over 25 pounds of boost gives you unexpected thrust and honest 300 horsepower that you certainly don't feel short changed on. You can really tell this motor has been built to be angrily revving to redline on a circuit or rally stage somewhere in Europe. And when you do hit the limiter, the cable operated six speed manual is a pleasure to shift around. An affirmative thump as you go into the gate, as good as any of the great transverse gearboxes from recent years. It's where the road gets less straight though, that the GR Corolla gets interesting. Turn the wheel and you'll find that the steering loads up well with a quick 12.7 to one rack that is very linear and easy to place. There isn't much feedback though. Very little road texture that comes through as you're beating down a back road or hitting the curves at a track day, which is certainly disappointing considering its half brother, the GR86, lets you know all of the details of the cracks and creases in the road. But such is the status quo in the days of electric power steering. And besides, the thing you'll notice more when you chuck the GR Corolla into a corner is the suspension. The car leans as you pitch it in, which at first is endearing, like a Miata, but start to take the GR Corolla through some transitions and you'll realize that its 3,300 pound curb weight and tall proportions make for quite a bit of body movement. And that's despite the center of gravity benefits from the Circuit Edition's forged carbon fiber roof. A roof that matches nicely with a carbon fiber skin from D-Brand, by the way, which also matches the carbon fiber trim in your Toyota Supra or the beautiful vintage brown leather in your classic Toyota Celica or with any other part of your car. D-Brand has a ton of skins that will be the perfect fit for you and whatever your style is. Protect your devices while still looking good at a car show with D-Brand. Link in the description. Front max struts and a rear multi-link setup is what you'd expect from a Corolla, but even with stiffer springs and dampers from standard, the car feels undersprung for the abuse I was throwing at it. I damn near fell out of my seat on track when I started to really chuck the car around, but then there's the third thing that you'll notice, something that really defines the GR Corolla's handling, the stability. The chassis is stiff with 349 new weld points and 2.7 more meters of structural glue holding it together. And when you point it to an apex, the GR Corolla obediently stays to the line you direct it to. No tendency for frustrating, pushy understeer and no real desire for on-throttle oversteer. That's when you remember, of course, the GR Corolla is all-wheel drive. And not just any all-wheel drive, an electronically controlled all-wheel drive system made with real rally technology. A computer-controlled rear coupling intelligently distributes power front to rear with its clutch packs. And the very uncomplicated knob in the center console tells the computer where to send power. Front mode for a 60-40 split, rear mode for a 30-70, or track mode for 50-50. And while between rear and track, there is a noticeable enough change in how the car exits a corner, the GR Corolla continues to be a drama-free experience no matter where it sends its torque. Just predictable, easy to access grip, fun, but not frightening. Fast, but without any evidence of fury. And that makes me feel weird, conflicted. The car is great. It's capable, it's stable, it's safe. But somehow I feel like with the bulging nostrils and forged carbon fiber roof and SARMs overdosed fender flares, it needed to drive more silly ride more ridiculously, rotate more willingly. And while yes, pulling the handbrake on the GR Corolla will disconnect the rear drive and let you pull the most badass dories in your high school parking lot, that by itself 
isn't enough. Of course, it's when you pit off the track and cruise the GR Corolla on the street that you begin to understand where it feels most at home. The punchy power band is exciting in the mid-range, with just enough lag to give you suspense and more than enough torque to keep you grinning. The suspension that leaned on track is compliant enough on the street to not absolutely pummel your spine. The humongous 14-inch Advix brakes are mighty and never fade, the clutch is light and the shifter is easy enough to teach your kids how to drive stick on, oh yeah, your kids, your family. The GR Corolla does all the fast stuff while still being a Corolla. Five seats, a hatch with enough space for track tires or Trader Joe's, an infotainment that doesn't make you feel like a Luddite. The thing I keep forgetting is that this car isn't supposed to be a hardcore track car. It's supposed to be what all the other great Toyotas before it have been. A fabulously fun driving experience when you want to push it, and then just a Toyota when you don't. And for 36 grand, it's actually damn good value for money. But for some reason, my stupid jaded brain, the one that spent the last decade driving around in loud and obnoxious 8.6s and Miatas, the one that would spend an entire commute thinking about installing poly bushings to take half a tenth off a lap time even though my L5 was slowly being churned to dust, yes that stupid brain kept wanting the GR Corolla to be something more. Wanting it to be the same sonorous tune just with more gain. It turns out, Toyota already beat me to the punch. There is a version of the GR Corolla for people as psychotic as myself, and it's called the Morizo Edition. The recipe isn't too different. Take all of the greatness of the Circuit Edition, the G16 engine, the six-speed trans, the stiff body shell, and just add a little spice to everything. Another pound of boost brings torque up 20 pound-feet. Shorter first gear and final drive ratios make for a more exciting climb to redline, and the already rigid chassis gets twice as much structural adhesive as the other model. Add in stiffer spring rates, monotube dampers, a retuned electric power steering system, and just to make sure your significant other knows to be absolutely pissed at you when you bring this home, no back seats, no rear power windows, no rear speakers, no rear door impact bars, a hundred pounds of weight saving, and in its place, big old chassis braces. No, this is not a GT3 RS, this is a Toyota Corolla. And speaking of, it comes on the same tires as the Porsche 2, Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2s. Truly, the most ridiculous thing you could ever do to a Corolla. And somehow, all of it is orchestrated in such a way that makes the Morizo feel exactly how I wanted it to feel. The added mechanical grip makes the nose so much more darty without being twitchy. The springs and dampers keep the body motion under control as you move from corner to corner. And while the added torque and shorter gearing are subtle by themselves, they work well together to turn up the excitement factor of that angry three-cylinder. The balance of the car remains neutral, no doubt due to the GR4 system being unchanged from the lower model but with the extra pace that the Morizo musters, it somehow makes even that stability feel more stimulating. And yes, it probably makes the road manners worse. And yes, it's absolutely ridiculous to own a Corolla with no back seats, but somehow it's still the one I found myself thinking about, even long after we left the cars behind at the track. Morizo is the pseudonym that President Akio Toyota races under, and he is the one that insisted that this more hardcore version be made. Bean counters be damned. And just to make sure everyone understood that this car was important to him, he put his own name on it. Somehow I feel like him and I would get along. But it's not just him. With all the great Toyota products in the past, you could really get a sense of the ethos of that car through its chief engineer. And GR Corolla's Sakamoto-san is no different. Stern and straightforward when answering technical questions, but get him talking about his creation and you can see the excitement in his eyes. Giddiness in his step as he took us around the Morizo like a proud father, showing us the handcrafted Takumi-made engine, the forged carbon fiber door trims made with leftovers from the manufacturing of the carbon roof, the purposefully sunken switches in the dash to keep from errant knees changing settings while cornering, the hidden cutouts in the rear carpet, hiding threaded holes to install your racing harnesses, a feature that he said he didn't even tell anyone about, just a little secret between us and him. And yes, the Morizo is 50 grand, and there's only 200 of them for the year. But the fact that a car like this exists, a Corolla like this exists, in a time when cars have more in common with a microwave than a motorcycle, is truly 
amazing. And for those of you less childish than me, the Core and Circuit Corolla still offer most of the thrills in a far more usable package. Speaking to Sakamoto-san, you realize that great Toyotas are rarely just about specs. They're about that human factor that seeps into a car, that intangible passion to create something that brings another person joy. Something that the world saw with Nobuaki Katayama and the Hachiroku, Isao Suzuki and the Supra, Tetsuya Tada and the 86, Naoiko Saito and the GR Yaris, and now Nayuki Sakamoto with his GR Corolla. A car that in one form can be the road riot family hauler and in another form, a track focused pace chaser. A car that has undeniable Toyota DNA and continues their long standing tradition of distilling motorsports into road cars while still staying true to their values as a car maker. A refreshing change of pace for a brand that spent decades trying to find a lost version of its own identity. And above all, finally, a concrete answer that yes, Toyota still knows how to make a sports car. Thanks for watching.